Shalom, shalom, greetings to you all. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you were, this is another opportunity that is being given to us, granted to us. We are blessed. We are blessed beyond measure. We are blessed because the Lord is always on our side with us and for us. Now, he's in you. Are you worrying him? I pray today in the name of Jesus and declare that you are blessed today. And the favor of God goes with you. He walks with you in all things that pertains to you. You shall see the goodness of God more than you expected. In Jesus' mighty name today. Talking about today. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. We are blessed brothers and sisters. We're studying in the Roman, the book of Romans, and uh, we are in Romans chapter 8, verse 3. It says, For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. So we talked about the flesh and the weakness of the law because of the flesh. It says, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. God sending his son in the likeness of his, this fullness flesh. And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Glory to God. Oh, glory. Instead of failing like the law failed, he condemned sin in the flesh. <laughs> My, 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 this is Jesus. Paul does not simply say that Christ came in the flesh. Mm -hmm. He's not saying that Christ came in the flesh. And of course, he did. For this would not have expressed the bond between Christ's humanity and this sin. And the sin... He was to bear in his submission. So nor did he say Christ came in the flesh of sin, which would have represented him as partaking of sin. Not in the likeness of flesh, since he was really an entirely human through his incarnation, but Paul said, in the likeness of the flesh of sin, in the likeness, notice that we have to be accurate in this when we are interpreting things. He's talking about the likeness, the likeness of the flesh of sin. He's not saying that he's a sinner, right? Because if he's a sinner, then... How can he save sinners? But he's in the likeness of the sin, of, of the flesh of sin. Meaning he's truly human, conformed in appearance to the flesh whose characteristic is sin yet sinless. Christ appeared in a body which was like that of other men in soul far as it consisted of flesh and was unlike in so far as the flesh was not flesh of sin. I want you to get this because if you get it, you understand what we're dealing with here. Now it's more than what we thought. You know, people say, oh, Jesus just came and, you know, died for us. And then, whoo, my, my. So he came and died for us. And then he went and he said, well, I'll come back. Wait for me one day. <laughs> Ooh, what are, why are we rushing? Why are we rushing? We should be taking our time and understand what all these things are about. We shouldn't be rushing the way we do. Now, that's a sign of not understanding, and that's, that helps us not to understand. 
he says, God, there was this weakness of the flesh. Now I explain the flesh, right? Now God sending his own son, my man. So when the son of God was sent in the likeness of sinful flesh, in the likeness of sinful flesh, what does that mean? It is talking about the humanity of Christ. You know, salvation is beyond what we think. Salvation is beyond what people think. Did you know that if Jesus Christ had not put on the flesh, humanity would have not been saved? I want to ask a question. What was man supposed to be saved from in the first place? <laughs> what was the problem? To put it in a different way. What was the issue? What happened in Genesis? You know, someone says sin. You know, okay, okay, okay. What is sin? Sin is missing the mark. What is missing the mark? Erroneous identity. What is that erroneous identity? It's when man thought of himself as separate from God. God had created him in his own image, but the voice of the serpent came and said, No, you're not like God. He lied to you. All you need to do is to eat of this tree and you will become like him. You see now, the missing of the mark is the doubt, doubting their origin, doubting their true identity. So what is sin? Sin is doubting your true identity. It's separating yourself from who you are. <laughs> so if that is true, then what were you, we saved from then? From the erroneous identity. In other words, <laughs> so what is it? So people think about sin because of what people do, you know, based on what people do. You know, he did it wrong, he did it right. In fact, there is also another question that is very important. What is right and what is wrong? Who defines what is right and what is wrong? How do we know what is right and what is wrong? Do we have a list of everything that is right and everything that is wrong? And is that universal? Is it universal? Is it applicable? It's the same, in other words, everywhere in the world and in all generations? Have you found out that some things that certain societies will call right, other societies will call it wrong. So in that sense, where is the consensus? And if God is to judge, how is he going to judge? If you were to judge even yourself, how are you going to judge this? Because what you call evil, some people have not been told that that is evil. To them, it's a part of their culture. In fact, it's honorable. So don't you realize that then this is a problem? Even sin is not known. We think we know what sin is, but people don't even know what sin is. Sin is more complicated than we think. If people think that way, sin is not, sin is not what people think. Sin is making, missing the mark. In fact, even those who call themselves you know, righteous that are trying to do their best to walk in righteousness, they are sinning. Why? Because they are first separating themselves from who they are and trying to or fulfill certain things in order to be accepted by God. You're already walking in sin. 
<laughs> you know, some people don't want to hear this, you know. So they have made themselves experts of sin and, and they, they have no idea of what sin is. They are judging based on what they have decided to to be was to, to, decided to be to to see or what they have decided to call sin or what they have been taught by their ancestors or their families or generation in societies you know based on that that's where how people judge sin right and wrong but before Adam ate of that tree right is there an issue in eating, eating of a fruit, eating a fruit, right? Is there an issue in eating of a fruit? But what was the issue there? They had to first separate themselves from the true identity, their true identity. And that's the issue, that's the sin. So you think that people are not sinning. People are, in fact, many people walk in sin, if that is true. And people don't even know what is righteousness. And righteousness is our union with Christ. So righteousness is only possible once we are united with Christ. You see, this is... Now, what is man saved from? Man is saved from himself. Are you aware that man is saved from himself? Because man is saved from his wrong perception towards himself. Man is saved from his wrong perception towards himself. Because that is where sin is. To identify himself with something else other than God. So, that is why I'm saying if Jesus had not put on the flesh or put on the body, he wouldn't have been saved. Because you see, he, I, he, him putting on the flesh, he meant God has put on the flesh. So in other words, there's this union between God and man that's going to be permanent. So he's setting the premises here. And that was a message that, look, this is salvation, that man and God are one, becoming one, that is salvation. So salvation is God becoming one with man. And that did not begin with man. Man could not bring God. You cannot. To himself. Rather, God brought himself and brought man to himself. Do you see this? So he says... God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. So it doesn't mean that Jesus was born with this full, sinful flesh. He's talking about the humanity of Jesus. When he was born, he was a human. People could see his humanity. He was given the body by Mary, in the womb of Mary. Jesus was made man. God became man. So he was man 100% and he was God 100% in, in one person, Jesus Christ. You see? And this is now the real power of salvation. So salvation is going to take place now because there is divinity that is going to heal humanity in its union. Once there is union between humanity and divinity, then salvation is going to take place. It's not that, oh, I used to do this, I no longer do it. That has nothing to do with salvation. Oh, I'm trying to keep salvation. <laughs> who is keeping who? He's the one keeping you in himself. <laughs> Glory to God. So God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. You see, Jesus sent in the sinful flesh, in the likeness of sinful flesh. What was he going to do? What was he going to do? In the sinful flesh, likeness of sinful flesh. This is what he did. We'll share more on this. Shalom, shalom. <music>